Ooh, here's a name I can say from the Eradicator. People of the verse, hello and welcome to this channel. This is the Eradicator, and in today's video, as you can see, I am heading towards a Karak. This is the Karak of uh, of Anak, uh, whom uh, you may be uh, familiar. He recently won the uh, what did he win? Uh, the the Mustang Beta. Uh, but he's also the owner of a character, and he was kind enough to uh, let me be a crew of his character so that I could make a video for you guys, so that you could check out what it is to be a part of a character. If you don't have a character, if you have never been in a character, well, we are going to experience what it is right here. But first, uh, yeah, we got to uh, enter the character, which is not easy uh, with a snub ship. I'm using a P-52 Merlin, because why not? We, uh, we don't see this ship quite often. And you can see that it is a very tight fit. Now, before we move on, guys, I would like to talk about this month's giveaway. This is a massive giveaway. I am giving a Starfire with lifetime insurance. All you need to do to get some winning is to be a subscriber of this channel or a backer of this channel. You're going to get multiple entries if you are both. Leave a comment to any Star Season related video this month. Only one comment will count and the winner will be announced early March. Also, guys, that's not all. If you are a Patreon supporter, you are also having the chance to get a $50 gift card. Now, this is really important. I'm trying to push my Patreon this month because I I'm having some extra goals at $200. We're pretty close at $200. I am getting a green screen to improve, well, to improve uh, the quality of the streams. I'm also planning to get more professional editing tools so that we can have better quality videos. Thank you so much to everybody who supports this channel. I really appreciate. Good luck to everybody as well. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give comments if you want to have a chance of winning that beautiful little monster out there. All right, let's talk about today's topic now. All right, well, let's uh, get out of this little Merlin here. Very interesting being in atmosphere, entering a, a Karak into atmosphere. Quite an interesting experience, I've got to say. There you go, the door is closing down. Anak, the captain of the ship, fully masters the way this ship is operating. Uh, Pedrino here, a new player of the uh, of Star Citizen. So welcome to Star Citizen, Mr. Pedrino. I hope that uh, he's going to enjoy uh, his uh, very first experience here with what we are going to do in uh, in uh, in today's video. Yes. So uh, how do we get out of the mini hangar? I think that this is the door. All right. Yeah, this is the door. I'm still not entirely familiar with the Karak. As you guys know, I don't own a Karak. I don't even plan on owning a Karak, but I do enjoy playing in somebody else's Karak. So that's what we're going to do today yeah uh, that's where you can see that uh, only very uh, tiny ships can actually fit inside so uh, we're gonna try to find our way to the the bridge here which is where eventually we'll be going looks like this is the wrong one we want to go to the upper bridge it they I, I figured out after that there was actually an elevator that went from the upper bridge to the lower bridge but uh myself being quite a uh a karak noob i would say i didn't hey no, no 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 don't wait for me all right uh, i was afraid that he would uh he would uh, leave without me so here is um this is these are the, the new buttons here the new kind of interfaces that we have for elevators which is definitely oopsie what is going on here uh, which is definitely much better than and they said the regular elevators that we have when we are at the landing zones, for example, which are a little bit clunky and, and sometimes, you know, inner thought is not working so well, right? Uh, the first thing that you got to do, of course, if you are in a character, the very first thing that you got to do is to go to the medical bay. And you don't need to lay down in the bed, which is what you have to do in your cutlass thread here. Just use the computer and set it as your actual bed. Uh, this is going to uh, allow you to do that without actually lying on the bed. Very important to do that because you never know. Uh, the ship is still a little bit glitchy. You know, you may be stuck somewhere and you may end up having no choice but to kill yourself, right? If you kill yourself, if you die, uh, you may want to respawn in the Karak rather than respawning at Area 18 or Port Lisar and have to travel uh, millions of kilometers until, you know, your actual destination, which is, is, is the Karak, right? So uh, that is a very convenient little uh, facility here that we have in the Karak. All right, so uh, we are in the atmosphere right now and we are going to jump to our destination, Anak, the captain of this Karak, which uh, is unnamed by the way, I don't even know the name of this Karak, is going to jump out to our uh, first uh, destination here. We're about to uh, enter Quantum Drive, Quantum Travel right here, there we go, all right. And our very first uh, destination is going to be, uh, it's going to be Hurston L4. And for that, we are going to have a climb jumper mission, 
which is very interesting because these are not these are missions that are not easy to do, especially if you're flying a solo ship. You have a lot of uh, it's interesting because these are prospectors, right? A lot of prospectors around uh, those parts, including also turrets that are here to destroy you. The mission is of course to destroy everything. You need to have a properly equipped ship if you want to destroy everything. But we are going to see how it goes with a half crude character because they basically that's what it is all right and so we are right in the middle of the action as you could see it was pretty easy to dispose of that uh, prospector here uh, more and more buggies are going to show up as you are going to see and as we are getting closer to the claim uh, but before that there's something that is going to happen that i want you uh, to check out so i'm going to put the sound uh, for you guys to see well, they all seem pretty far. Okay. Well, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a lot of work. Nine. <laughs> There's a little bit of work. Uh, obviously, we were getting a bit. Look at this. Oh my gosh, did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a, a, another look at that, guys, because this was actually uh, very impressive. Let's have a second look. Nine. <laughs> There's a little bit of work. Oh my gosh, did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> so this was a sign that things are going that things were about to uh, heat up here just out of nowhere a prospector just ram into us and this also shows the strength of the Karak, uh, a full ramming like this at full speed did not even damage the shields of the Karak. So this ship is a beast. This ship is is this ship a little bit overpowered? I don't know because at the same time it is a military class vessel, whereas the Prospector is a miner. So it does make sense, right, that the that the Karak is supposed to withstand a shock, you know, of a ship coming at full speed uh, against it. Uh, and it also proves that you know if you are a, if you are getting your hand on some of the bigger ship, then you are also getting a little bit of, pro of uh, protection. Does it mean that this is a ship that is paid to win? At this stage of the game, well, the Karak is not available uh, for people to buy with in-game currency. The only way you can get a Karak, unfortunately, is by either uh, acquiring it through uh, through the, the, sh the shop, you know, robberspaceindustries.com, or eventually stealing one. So at this moment, I suppose that all the naysayers who are saying it is pay to win are probably uh, correct. But as always, guys, I know that this is not popular, a popular opinion. You know, this is an alpha. And again, guys, I don't like it. Don't get wrong. So, hey, right, how dare you keep saying it's an alpha? I know I don't like it. But at the same time, you got to understand that uh, this is a way for CIG right now to create some income. So this is why at this time, the Karak is not available for purchase in the future. It will eventually be. So let's chill out a little bit and uh, let's enjoy uh, the firepower of the Karak while well, sometimes we can. So we're still firing at some of those uh, some of those uh, sentry guns here. As we can see, not too difficult to dispose of them. That's a beautiful look at that target destroyed, as you can see. Now, and this is just, by the way, we are making really short work of those uh, enemies, those buggies, as the computer would say, with just two crewmen and one pilot, basically. So it's 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 actually going to be quite interesting to see how a fully a fully uh, crewed Karak is going to fare under such situation. Now, at, on the other side, and this is where the balance of the game right now is very interesting. Is it worth it taking one of those missions with a full crew? Uh, I personally don't think it is. If you take this mission, for example, the Remove Claim Jumper mission, which is the one that you are seeing here, this is a mission that has a payout of 10,000 Alpha UEC. And 10,000 Alpha UECs here are being split between three players, myself, the pilot, and the other gunner. That means that every time we succeed uh, that mission here, we are all getting 3,333 Alpha UEC. Uh, is this interesting financially speaking? I personally don't think it is. I think I can make per hour far much more money by trading or even doing some FPS missions. But at the same time, you have the pleasure of uh, sharing the experience with other people. Uh, you are in a very cool ship. And also, you don't really have the pressure 
of using your own assets to make money. So everything has, you know, it's like it's like with everything. Everything has pros and everything has cons. So uh, the pros is that you're not using your own assets and you're with other people. The cons is that, that well, the payout per hour, the per individual, is eventually not so good. Some uh, really interesting uh, visuals, by the way. Probably this is going to be uh, the thumbnail. All right, we are going to keep on clearing uh, the area here. Uh, and this was the purpose of uh, this video, by the way. I just wanted to show you uh, how effective the Karak is uh, in, in, you know, to do those missions. And it's really interesting because I've done these Remove Flame Jumpers missions quite a bit in uh, in the past. I, I used to do that with my former Battle Ready Cutlass, which I don't have anymore because it was upgraded for the Cutlass Red. And I, I never really had this sense of serenity. Uh, when I was flying this mission with the Cutlass Black, uh, I was always under ple pressure. There, there were about you know ten prospectors firing at me at the same time, plus the sentry turrets. Uh, sometimes I was losing my shields. Whereas when I'm doing this mission right here uh, with some of my buddies, it really feels like uh, this is definitely a piece of cake. So I guess you know it's good and bad at the same time because you don't you have the the you have the uh, uh, you have the pride of being with your buddies, but at the same time, you don't have that sense of proud and accomplishment of uh, doing that alone. Eventually, we went to uh, another location and uh, we did that mission a second time. Uh, and uh, just like the first time, it was just as easy. So we were able to uh, split that money evenly. And yeah, it was not the, the most fantastic payout, but eventually we had a great time. So please tell me uh, what you guys think about uh, the Karak. Have you ever flown in a Karak before? Have you uh, taken part of multi-crew missions? Please tell me everything in the comments down below. Also, do you think that payouts when being in a cruise are worth it? Are you getting paid or are you doing it for free? Some people would do it for free too, which is also okay. I would like to know everything in the comments down below. And that's all for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget that this month I've got a giveaway. I am giving away a staffer with lifetime insurance. You don't want to miss that. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to drop a comment if you have to, if you want to have a chance of winning. Patrons get also extra entries. If you want to help me out, remember I've got some really interesting goals this month. Let's get that green screen. Let's get those professional editing tools. If you want to support me, the link is in the description down below. I will see you tomorrow for more Star Citizen content. I think that, uh, hey, tomorrow we're going to have Inside Star Citizen. We're going to have a um, our Inside Star Citizen live breakdown. So we're going to have that live stream on on uh, YouTube tomorrow. That's going to be awesome. Can't wait to be with you guys. Um, and for now, well, this is the Eradicator. I'm signing out.